Hello and welcome to the first of nine Ulster GA webinars on the Club Coach Development Programme. Tonight's webinar is Planning for the Condensed Season, presented by Killian Conlon. This webinar is presented in association with O'Neill Sportswear. This webinar will be recorded and uploaded to the Ulster GA YouTube channel in the next few days. Thank you and I'll hand you over now to Killian. Thank you very much, Yashin. And welcome everyone to tonight our first webinar. My name is Killian Conlon and I am from Ballanderry. And tonight I'll be taking this webinar on planning for the condensed season. I am a COVID officer for my club, youth officer for my club youth coach as well, uh, and also take a, a senior club team. So um, I'll be using all that um, tonight as we discuss all the different points um, throughout the evening. Um, I plan to be no more than an hour, you'll be happy to hear, but if the interaction gets good and, and there's lots of questions, um, we can go on for a wee bit longer, but definitely no longer than than probably an hour and 15 minutes. So we'll we'll see how, how we get on. So I would encourage everyone to get involved as much as you can. Um, and if there's anything that you wanna you wanna type, just type away to the chat box there and Oshin will let me know as the session goes on. So um, Thank you very much. Just a wee introduction there. So you'll see on the slides, I'll just move move through them. So you will have seen there just as we started uh, the different dates that the Ulster Council has, has the webinars on. So there is there's nine in there and they're going to last up until June. But thankfully, we're going to be in the pitch a lot earlier than that. So tonight's webinar is just going to be getting organised for that first session, which will be for some people on the 12th of April. Um, and then just with yesterday's news in the south, some of you, is, if you are tuning in from the south, then your first session will be the 26th of April and it'll be great to get started. So tonight, planning for the condensed season uh, 2021. So what did we learn from the summer of 2020? And how can we take that learning from 2020 to plan and prepare us better for the summer ahead? What types of training are required for such a short, sharp competitive phase and the importance of fitness through games? So that's the sort of thing that we'll talk about throughout the evening. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, um, and I'll get a wee bit of interaction with this one as well. So it's the, the water breaks that was introduced last year. Um, I think it was introduced for a couple of reasons. Uh, one for uh, to help with player recovery and, and, and fitness levels and just to give players a break because of the, the short, uh, short competitive nature of the, the championship. Um, and also from a from a COVID point of view, uh, to take more time um, with the hygiene of uh, transmission of drinking water. So you'll see just on the left there uh, an idea of water bottles where teams were were numbering their water bottles. So uh, it was the same person drinking out of the same bottle. Um, so other ideas for that is um, if you have you know bottles, you can have them sort of the person's name on them or possibly with um, with initials on as well. So that's just different ideas that you can have for, for water bottles. But in terms of tactically in the water breaks, uh, we've got two minutes. So we'll just read you this this wee message from, from one of the games. It was from the Antrim Championship last year. So the ref blew the whistle to restart the game while St. Gauls were still in the huddle for their water break. He signaled to the keeper to play on. So what happened was the other team, were they were ready to go. The referee blew the whistle. St. Gauls were still in their huddle. They got the ball, attacked up the field, uh, and they scored a goal. Now, I think there was maybe six or seven or eight points in it at that time, but um, it would have been interesting to see if he had a, if he had to give that decision if the game had been a lot tighter. So um, it's just making sure that, you know, we are using our water breaks uh, as best we can. We've only got two minutes, so do you use those two minutes, um, you know, just to totally recover or do you use it tactically so so that's the first sort of interaction that we'll have tonight so Oshin um, if I can ask you to sort of keep an eye on the chat box and ask everyone to to just type in if you use your water break um, as a time to get a message to players or do you just use it as a, a rest for players or do you let the players lead it so if if you can just type it into the chat box there folks we can um, just get our first bit of interaction going for the evening thank you Yeah, okay, Killian. So we have a few coming in here. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. We have one coming in there. 
from Sean saying it's used for instructions and messages. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I'm saying players led with minor instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, using for rest and tactics. Another one saying player led. Brief messaging and recovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, bit of both, maybe a bit of, bit of both of what we mentioned previous. Uh, water and instrumentation. Mm -hmm. Time to get a message. Uh, yeah. Both, the, again, tactics, rest and regroup. Rest and regroup yeah. seems to be coming in quite a bit. Player led chance to communicate. Mm -hmm. Getting messages across, reorganize and refocus. Yeah. Rest and quick tactics. Break in message. Let them recover. Maybe a tactical change. Um, mm -hmm. tactical, tactical tweaks. Player led chat with water. Prep to win the next kick out. Instructions yeah. and questions for players. Yeah. Same thing happened in our team as an image. Yeah. So that's, that's more or less the the gist of it yeah, there, so it. some yeah. coming in, but we'll okay. Thanks. Thanks very much, Ashin. Um perfect feedback and that's the sort of interaction that that that's the sort of answers that 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 I was hoping for. Um and you know, I think one of the last ones there was to get ready for the next kick out. So, you know, we've now learned um from having the experience of water breaks, uh, they're happening at all levels. So it's just getting our teams tuned in um for that next kick out um where that may be where it's up and it's it's your defense or it's or it's the opposition's defense so just getting organized and, and i heard phrases there like player led so all all good stuff but whilst getting the recovery and also getting the hydration in as well you know we've all been to matches last year where we've seen coaches and managers you know continuously shouting for the two minutes or you know banging the water bottles and throwing things about the place i don't think uh, when you have two minutes that that would be best use of of, of the time so just thought we'd, we'd start with that one tonight so um we'll just move on so what are our players doing at the moment so we're probably all in the same boat in that most of our players or all of our players uh, they're doing two types of things they'll, they'll be doing strength workouts uh, following programs and that could be done online zoom maybe in their living rooms or or if some players are lucky enough to have a home gym there they'll be doing it in their home gym so uh, that's one area that players will be doing and they'll also be doing uh, running programs these running programs we've, we've all seen the players we've seen them on roads uh, some of them are running on treadmills and now thankfully as the weather has uh, got better uh, later evenings and um, just with the pitches in better shape We've now seen the majority of the players back on the grass, which is which is great to see. So that's really what our players are doing at the moment. Um, some might be doing other things, um, maybe rehab programs or or maybe I don't know any just whatever they feel is best for them. But that's really what what our players are doing at the moment. But whenever we see them again on the twelfth of April, it's going to just be our job to make sure that we know where to start and what all the different levels will be whenever we see them. So on that 12th of April date or the 26th of April or whatever date you choose to go back on. So you're going to have different types of uh, players. Now, this could be this will be obviously for for Kamugi teams as well and for ladies football, and just for whatever code it is that you're, you're playing. So you'll have that county player. And he hasn't stopped or she hasn't stopped training. So they're going to be in great shape. Um, you'll have all the different types of club player then. You'll have club players who um, are very committed. They're maybe friendly with the county players. So they're maybe even copying some of the things that they're doing. So um, they'll have done everything asked and they'll be in great shape too. So player two in the club then, he'll have dipped in and out maybe um, off the running programme or dipped in and out of the strength programme. Um, Player three then, uh, they'll have concentrated on the gym and maybe not done any running. And then you'll have players who will have just ran and not done any strength work. Then you'll have the player who will come and he hasn't done anything or she hasn't done anything because maybe they had no motivation to do it. Uh, we are in a pandemic after all, or maybe they just haven't decided um, whether they're going to come back yet. So that's all the different types of players that you have in your panel. So. Can you bring all that together? And, you know, that's what we really need to be doing now is, is, is sitting down and talking to all those players and getting all that information so that it's not going to be a surprise to you um, on the first night, first night back. So what could we be doing now with our players that 
could help us make the best of this situation something different, something maybe football, non-football related. Could we do some uh, team building activities? Uh, for example, a mountain walking groups, um, obviously staying within the rules because we've got the restrictions that we, we have to follow. Um, could you be contacting the players for, for a chat, meeting them for a coffee, going for a walk outside, having a Zoom session that doesn't involve football or hurling or camogie? Um, could you have a quiz, maybe a poker night, uh, some type of online game? You know, these are all the things that you could be doing outside of football. And I've seen this recently that that clubs are are, are doing like a fundraising drive or or different fundraising ideas that can help with startup costs on a return to play because you might have to buy more equipment for your club. You might have to maybe spend more money on maybe getting all that equipment clean so you'll have to buy products to, to do that. So, you know, maybe a, a fundraising idea and your team could help you do that. So that's all the different things that um, that we could do. So, Oshin, if I can um, bring you back in here just um, and ask ask um, the coaches out there just to sort of give all their ideas of if they've done any activities with their team or if they, they plan to do any. And, you know, for even for ourselves, um, it could be some ideas for us as well. So um, if I could just ask you folks just to use the chat box and to start sending in some info, please. Thank you. So some team building activities, what, could, what else could we do? And is the like of this relevant? Do you think it's relevant? Or would you be better waiting until later on in the season? Okay, Kevin, so I'm coming through here. Um, with weekly challenges maybe broken into different groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Under 16 ladies here had a Kahoot quiz, which was which was a blast, it says. Um, mm -hmm. There's another Kahoot quiz. Um, well attended, good feedback. Um, yeah. Organizing a race night for our team tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Get the races of YouTube. Um, so you can watch them there. Race race nights again scheduled bingos coming in. There's a few bingos coming in there. Very good. Um, yeah. And then there were saying a couple of points coming to say there. It's extremely relevant to do some non GA activity as well. Very good. That's good. That's good. So yeah, uh, I think it's important and then especially whenever it's a, a short a short season uh, and because we weren't allowed to meet up and do things. Whenever restrictions sort of allow, I think it'll be good to um, to meet our players and to get involved and, and just to do things um, with them outside of the pitch. So thanks for your input there uh, as well, folks. We want to make this as interactive as we can. So I would encourage everybody as well to sort of take some notes um, as the night goes on uh, as well. Now, even uh, as the night goes on, if you have any questions, certainly put them into us in there and he will he'll, he'll give them to me. So that's just a picture of um, of the team that I was uh, taking last year, and I'll be with them again this year. So, so last year on the on the 29th of June, where this restrictions allowed for for groups of six to to meet up. So what we did was we, we met in groups of six, and uh, we done like a mountain challenge there. So we, we would have walked up the mountain. It took maybe 45 minutes to get up and 45 minutes down. So uh, we just used this time to to chat and. And the smaller groups we got around everyone so it was good and then just just at the top we just sort of had a, a, had a sit down and a chill and a drink of water so it, I, th I thought it was really good and then at the at the end whenever we had all the groups i think it was maybe like seven or eight groups uh, we all went up together then whenever the restrictions allowed so um it was just good to sort of break it down and you know that we weren't just rushing straight onto the field just because we were allowed to in the first night i just thought it was more important to to sort of uh, let's get everybody back and talking again and together again. And um, I, I thought I thought it really worked. And that, that's the reason why we, we sort of have to approach this season as, uh, you know, uncover everything so that the players, you know, are, are looked after as best we can, you know. So again, off the field and as part of tonight, we're going to be doing stuff that relevant on the field like types of training and things but I just want to just make sure that we're as planned as 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 best we can off the pitch as well so so things that we can improve on logistically and this is purely from from my point of view as being involved last year uh, with the youth committee and being a COVID officer and and being involved with the senior team just the amount uh, of work that was involved off the pitch so the more people that you can get involved in this and helping you, then the less time that you, or the more time that you can sort of spend with your team and, and your players. So I would suggest that 
you know, if you don't have a designated person yet, um, get one, find one, um, advertise for one, you know, have that person who's going to look after your COVID message, your measures, the sanitizing stations, making sure the players have filled in their questionnaires, you know, um, talking to parents, communicating with parents, making sure that all those groups are set up and, and that that's covered. Another thing as well, which came up last year, thankfully with the weather and hopefully we'll get it again this year, but um, the marquee set up at clubs last year was very, very useful, and especially in the championship. But it's maybe an idea that we could maybe start getting these more keys set up now and having them um, there all the time for training. This would help for changing and it would help for tactical chats at training. Um, and then you would possibly need maybe a portable one because if, if the club that you're visiting to play a match, if they don't have something set up for you, then at least you can bring your portable one with you. Um, and this will avoid disruption and, and surprise whenever you get there. Because if you leave it the chance and that visiting club doesn't sort you out, then you're just going to be changing in your cars or and it could be raining. Um, so you want to make sure that that's that's OK. And, and if you're if you're a club that somebody's coming to, you want to be hus uh, as hospitable as you can. So you, you should be trying to help teams as, as much as you can and as possible. So just following on from the marquees, if you've got a physio or a masseur or somebody that is in charge of your first aid, you want to make it as comfortable for them as well. So the marquee would help with that. Now, the marquee um, for COVID restrictions obviously has no sides on it and the door will be open and, you know, so that fresh air is coming in. So um, that will that will help. But it just covers you from either the strong sun or, or from the rain. Uh, tactic board pitch side for demonstrations discussion. So this is sort of coming into to our training now. So do you, do you have one? Uh, is it a big one? Is it a small one? Is it portable? Um, do you have the right markers for it? Um, do you have someone in your management team that's taken pictures of the, the data that's written on the board so that all that information is kept? Things like that. And then how do you get around? So just like we talked about in the water. So how do you get around the water, the fruit, the food, the distribution of that? Do you have enough of it? Um, can you recycle it for the next session, for example? Some of the water bottles that we got thrown back at us last year, you know, they were maybe were three quarters full and then that went straight into the bin or in that bag. But could you recycle that? You know, um, could you have your bottles numbered or names on them? So and could, do you have a couple of those? So that there's plenty. And then do you have enough people to actually distribute that? Um, if you don't have someone, could you have maybe an injured player doing it? You know, so these are all the sort of things that we should be planning for now so that you don't leave it to the last minute. And then also, when the referees are, are keen to get the balls uh, thrown in, uh, just like at the water breaks, before the game starts and at half time, there's always that bundle of gear that's thrown at gear or thrown towards the sideline. And there's more of it now because you can't run in and out to the changing room. So there's more gear brought to pitch side. So you want to make sure that that is uh, cleared up when you have somebody or two or three people that are tuned in and, and getting all that um, equipment and, and clothing towards the sideline as quick as, as quick as possible. Other things that we could be doing to save time uh, before the season um, is, and you probably have already been doing this, but I just want to just make sure that it's all covered and that all points are, are talked about. So to save time before the season starts, could you be doing some possibly video analysis work now? So could you be setting your players a group challenge to work over the, the championship fixtures? Could you be splitting them up into groups, um, setting them wee tasks? Just like I heard in the in, in the chat box the last time, you know, um, setting players challenges. So could that challenge be to watch last year's championship matches? Uh, maybe you only had one match, or you had two matches, or you won the championship. So you're you're going over all your matches, um, and then from that, make a list of the improvements to be made and the lessons learned from your from your games. Um, you could possibly do a session on the new rules, and do we know all the rules and do we understand them? You know, there might be some tweaks from last year. I know last year was the first of the, you know, the advanced mark and, you know, the sin bin. So do we know all those rules? Um, I have a wee story for you is that I recently took the, the referees course. Uh, it's just something additional that I want to do myself. And um, it gives you a few chances to do the quiz at the end. So the first quiz that, that I done, and I don't, I don't mind saying it, I, I got 60% um, of the answers correct. Um, and now, and that, that's an issue because, you know, if I'm standing on the sideline um, and I'm asking the referee questions, I can't ask him a question if I don't know the answer, you know. So we, how many of us know the rules? 
how many of our players know the rules and do we know them inside out and i think that's an area where we could definitely and that would help the officials as well if they could see that everybody was making an effort then maybe that area of the game could could be improved on so all the wee things you could be asking your team is you know what what are we doing that's working and that we should keep doing what can we stop doing and what can we continue to try and work on that we know that works and we know that will take us to the next level we could be sending players individual clips and we could even ourselves make it easier for them we could do a voiceover of the video analysis and then send it into the group chat so you know things things like that so just before we go into the the training and we're probably halfway halfway there at this point so um Oshin, if i can just ask the coaches um to just put some messages into the chat box there um on any issues that have come up in those last couple of slides just before we talk about the training um if they have any um, talking points or any issues or concerns with with any of that or if they have any questions at this point certainly uh, please get interactive with us yeah Helen, we had a wee question in there from um, Dermot he said um, for an under 8 team would you suggest wait until things restart I've tried something I'd, I've tried sending out some drills and basic skills for them but no response from parents mm. um, and then we got actually got a reply from, from Joe who said hey come up with a good idea saying that he looked after an under 13 team mm -hmm. and sent them all a, a YouTube clip for how to juggle and gave them two weeks and right. up a prize for the winner and got a good response and, and now seven of the kids can juggle so it's good for their hand-eye coordination yeah very good like another good idea there and um, another one come in there saying a possible idea could be help the tidy town lift and litter something like that except so mm -hmm. Yeah, I've heard of that. In terms of the under eights for for Dermot, Dermot, I would uh, I would be getting the kids out as uh, as soon as you, as you can, as long as you have enough equipment and and you have enough coaches to help. Because you know, on that first morning back at under eights, you want to have a ratio of maybe you know uh, one coach per three or four kids, or you know as many as you can. And I know that in in some clubs that can be difficult, but certainly a ball each and. Um, getting them working on their skills uh, as soon as they can you know that's um that's key i know some of them will have, a, have experienced the the school coaches were back in school there last week so that's a great start for them so yeah certainly get them get them going as early uh, as you can is what what i would say but yeah certainly some good points there on the on the on the juggling i'd like to see that in action so ashin will move on um then so last year then uh, we only had uh, like training started 29th of june so you had the month of july you had uh, august and you had september and then teams that were lucky enough to be still in a championship or a late league or something like that they maybe had maybe a bit of october as well but uh, so that's really all that all that we had so we had about 12 weeks so what was your training like in those 12 weeks you know these are the questions that we need to ask was it smart training did you have your week organized was training methodical and was your sessions tough did you have tough sessions did you have tactical sessions did you have strength sessions uh, did you have recovery sessions was there a particular exercise that you did in your sessions that maybe caused some injuries you know these are all the sort of questions that you want to be meeting up with your management teams and coaching teams and, and thrashing this all out now so did you monitor monitor all that training uh, did you know when top-up runs were required now when we talk about top-up runs it's really if you plan to do a really heavy session and you maybe want the players to cover a certain amount of distance will you know at any given time throughout that session what the distance is and you know will you know maybe at the end if that's enough and um, so did you listen to your players collectively and did you also know when an individual needed maybe more training or needed less training did you use small sided games to work on fitness do you understand the concept of why these games are used are you playing the correct games or are you just doing them as everyone else is doing them or you feel that the players will be wondering why they're not doing them so this is just sort of all the questions so did you use tactical medium sized games to help you with your game plan and did you play full size games so that's our our, our training so just when we mentioned the the small sided game so all all teams now 
Um, well, they probably always were, but there just seems to be a bigger emphasis now on on small set of games, medium sized games, and full size games. So, um, small set of games. Then you know we're not going, really going to tonight what small set of games you should be playing. But I just want to just sort of make sure that you're aware that you know when you're doing small set of games that you know that you're aware of the dimensions of the size of the area that you're going in that you're aware of the timings of each game that you're going to be playing, how many sets of each game that you're going to play, and the intensity. In a small set of games, the intensity should be high. So is your intensity high? And is the reason of your game maybe why the intensity isn't? Are the players working hard enough? Are they too tired? Did you do too many sets? And then this is something that we you probably all should um, involve at this point is, do you have reasoning in your game? And the reason why I put that in is because you can't just expect on game day and match day on Sunday that, you know, if you're shouting messages um, to do things, these small set of games, if your reasoning is good and it's repetitive enough, then on a game day, that message should be clear because the players then will resort back to what they're known best from, from their small set of games. So get the reasoning into those games as quick as you can. So just on that, Oshin, if I can just sort of um, ask uh, coaches to use the chat box as to, you know, what, type of things in a game plan could you use in, in, in a small set of games? So folks, if you just sort of send me through, just what could you work on there and can it be repetitive? So game plan, can we work on your game plan on a small set of game and what would the um, reasoning be in the game or how could you get that message across? Okay, Killian, a couple of comments yep. through here. Um, quick movements. Yeah. One touch football. Yeah, one touch, yeah. Use the sidelines as a second or third defender. Yeah. Um, learning to double team players. Yeah. Set pieces. Scanning, finding space in confined areas. Movement. Okay. Keeping possession. Third person movement. Tactical plays or specifics of what you're looking to work on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I can just sort of ask um, in, in a, a yes, no answer, are those things that you're using, uh, are those part of your game plan? So can you answer yes or no? And we'll see how many yeses. Uh, are you repetitive in your reasoning in your games? Yeah, we have a good couple coming through here, mostly yeses. Um, oh, yeses. Any no's? There's the odd no, there's a, a think so and a sometimes. Right, okay. Um, so, but... It looks yes, the mostly seems to be yes. Mostly yes. Okay. Well, that's that's good. That mostly yes. The the maybes and the don't knows and the knows. Um, it's maybe something that you can look at. That you know, if you don't have a game plan, or maybe um, you know, are are in the process of thinking about one. You know, we simple messages in these repetitive games um, can help your overall picture. Um, and then you can certainly take this then into your medium sized games. Now people will probably think. Medium size, I've never heard of a medium size game. So it's really just like I'll give you an example maybe 30. The, everybody's heard of the 30 yard pass game, or everybody's done 30 yard pass game. So it's in a bigger area, it's not as intense as the small sided one. Um, it's working on a particular skill. So 30 yard pass game, you're working on the quality of your kick pass. Now that is game related and it, it, it could also be game plan related as well so if you're if your game plan is based towards uh, kick passing it's a perfect game for it. Uh, players love it coaches love it it works and um, there's no problem with playing it all the time now i've just added in there just the the new rules so you just want to make sure that you know you incorporate new rules into it as well so say for example you were playing a medium sized game and you were playing it maybe outside the 45, but it, it, it incorporated inside the 45 as well. So you could maybe award a mark uh, if the ball um, went from outside the 45 uh, and the pass was was more than the, the 20 or 25 metres that it has to. So again, going back to the rules, do you know that rule? And are you able to bring it into your training? And if not, um, can, you, can, can you start doing that? Um, so then we'll go into the full size game then. So... Uh, Small set of game, medium size game. So again, you know, you, you've got your message in there. So obviously, full size game, you're you're always going to have your message in those games. But you want to make sure that you're not playing these games maybe for too long. 
because you know um, to keep that intensity le- level uh, and level of competition you want to sort of maybe cut down on the, the time um, mix your teams if possible or if you have a strong A team uh, and a strong B team as well it allows for good competition and then you can get different tactics going and then you can incorporate your kickouts as well so that's your 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 three different types of of, of games that that you should be you should be playing um and then just a wee message there you can't expect things to happen in the game if it's not covered in these games uh, above and you're training throughout the week in terms of what types of games you play you know the internet's full these days of of people who are putting up examples on the internet so you know you can always look at those you made of some booklets the ulster council have some great material as well on their website so you want to be looking at the like of that you don't have to copy it all but you can certainly use the templates and then sort of work it to what numbers you have and what your game plan um is so example of a training week now um this is just something that 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 I've the template that I've sort of been going with at club level. Um, some may maybe decide that you know this doesn't work for them, or they would rather go on different nights, or they would rather sort of work it differently, and that's fine. Um, and if anything like tonight that you maybe not uh, or you don't agree with, uh, well, you know whatever it is that 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 works best for you, that that that's fine. You know, um, there's no real sort of experts um, here. I'm, I'm not an expert, but uh, this sort of works well for me, works well for me as a coach, as a manager, and uh, the players seem to be responding to it. So I, I see no reason to change it from my point of view anyway. So we'll just go through it here. So uh, we'll start the week off on a Sunday. Okay, so Sunday is mostly when you play your games. So this is the day that you want to be at your fittest. This is the day that you want your players to be really at themselves. They'll play 60 plus minutes. Um, so you want them um, to be really at the level that, that, that you want to. Obviously, you know, you'll work up to that. Um, you'll not be at, at your highest at, on the first game, but certainly when it comes to knockout championship, you really want to be there. Now, you do have an issue then if you are playing a game and you've got a panel of 30 and only 15 players or maybe five subs, so that's 20. So what do you do with the other 10 players? So you want to be making sure that you're organised enough that those 10 players actually get a full match as well. Now, they'll, they'll not get playing in your match, but you want to make sure that they cover the same distance that maybe, so you want to be making sure that they get some sort of running or some sort of um, work because you, you you don't want to send those players home having done nothing for that session uh, and you don't want them going home and then having to go back out that same evening. So you want to get them into an activity sort of as close to to that game as possible. So maybe at half time or or after the match, straight after the match or, or or during the match. If it's a session, then it has to be like a high end sort of session, including small set of games with intensity, decision making, one v one scenarios for scores, you know, things like that. And then some top up runs that we talked about if the distance hasn't been met. So you want to make sure if it's a game, you're going at it. And if it's also if it's a training session, it's going to be the toughest training session of, of the week. So Tuesday then uh, would be your recovery type session. Um, you could do some tempo running. You could play some medium sized games because there's less running in it and there's less intensity in it. But it's still filled with message and reason. And it's based on info from your weekend game, for example. So you could do some isolated skill work in groups or individually work on shooting and tackling. Um, and it's okay for these sessions not to be, you know, full on intense. You know, you get the managers and, and the coaches out there who want every session to be 100 mile learn and intense and, you know, come on. You know, that's fine at the weekend and on a Thursday, but you don't really want that every session or every exercise. So you want it to be sort of relaxed where the players can feel comfortable and confident that they can work on their skills. So this is a good uh, day of the week to do isolated skill work. So then the Thursday, you're building up. Um, your intensity levels and you're working towards your game at the weekend or your, your training session at the weekend. So again, it's filled with uh, tactics, it's filled with reason, it's filled with intent. You could play possibly a full size game, but maybe not just a, a full like 60 minute one. Maybe cut the time just to ensure that that intensity level is there um, and then do some running after it if you feel that, that that's needed. Now the warm ups for these three sessions would be different as well. It would be same in the same exercise that you're doing, but for example, on a Tuesday, it's a recovery session, so you, you might need a longer warm up 
or if the players uh, come to you on Thursday and they're still a wee bit sore, uh, you could maybe do an extended warm up there. So again, from this, you're listening to your strength and conditioning coaches, you're listening to your physios, and you're listening to the players because most of those um, or these warm ups now are maybe player led and they know. But if you just sort of give them an idea that look, it's okay tonight, I'll cut it down. You make sure that you get a good warm up in there. So it's uh, so important for each session. Also, as a coach and a manager, during the warm-up, are you standing to the side, you know, laughing and joking or having the fun maybe with injured players or talking to committee members? Or are you actually watching the warm-up and looking at the warm-up closely so that maybe you see a player who's maybe a bit limping or he's he just doesn't look great, his body language isn't there, or he just doesn't look as if he, he wants to be there that night? So, you know, you want to be making sure that if that is the case, that you can remove that player to the side, have a wee chat with him, see what's up. Um, and then take it from there. So it's it's really important that, that, that you're tuned into that. So that sort of takes me on to the next question, Oshin, if that's okay. Um, so is it enough to think that skill work is covered in games or do we need the isolated skill work uh, during each session? So that's just your traditional drills that you would do, your kick passing drills, soloing drills, fist passing drills, you know, in with a few questions here and then we'll have a hand up as well from Sandra so yeah we'll certainly get her to, she can we'll get her jump in in a wee second okay um so we've a question there uh over some so a couple of questions coming in now some statements um we we'll have sort of said like a mixture maybe certain mm-hmm. players will need extra training and mm-hmm. um, that will bring in some skill work mm-hmm. um two or three isolated skills included in every session mm-hmm could do these in training yeah uh, driven by what you say at the weekend we work on hours mm-hmm. um, a couple of more for a mixture of both um, and game is much more relevant drill not game intense mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. skills have to be mixed and repetitive to build mental conditioning yeah is there sort of an idea of skill work and sort of bringing in both at the same time um, yeah Oshin, that's good. We got good feedback there. Um, so I'll just move on to the next slide because uh, isolated skill work can be involved in, in, in the next slide as well. And, I, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll tell you why. So um, if we can go on to. Um, so after you do your sessions now, so some of the sessions you might go maybe uh, a Monday night or a Wednesday night. That's just the the traditional most teams would go Tuesday, Thursday. But maybe um, some clubs in, in Tyrone would have traditionally went Tuesday and Friday. I uh, know in County Down, it works well for them. They go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then their weekend's free. So, you know, every county is different, but um, you just want to make sure that you get the right routine. Um, and whatever routine that is, that you're tying your training in around that and that your recovery nights are, are included, um, you know, People don't want to be out of the house every night of the week, and you want to see that difference between county level and club level in terms of commitment. But you know, you really do have to sort of buy into the recovery. So, on the slide, you'll see all the recovery sort of at the top of the screen is more or sort of active um, recovery. So, you've got recovery runs. So, uh, on my template, which would have been a Sunday session. Uh, some players might want to go out on a Monday evening and do some recovery running. Now, this will be sort of simple, straightforward tempo running, you know, end line to end line or 20 metres to 20 metres, um, 100 metres, maybe three sets. You know, it wouldn't be done at great pace, but it would just be something just to get the legs moving again. And um, Some players like it, some don't. Some need it, some don't. So again, with chatting with, with your strength and conditioning coaches or your physios, I know some clubs don't have them, but you know you want to be making sure that you're talking to some sort of professionals. You know, I'm not a prof- I'm not a I'm not a professional physio. I'm not a professional strength and conditioning coach, so I'd, I'm not going to give you sort of advice as to what you should do. But um, this is sort of the ideas that 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 I've done in the past and, and will continue to do. Um, so other ideas is you've got your ice baths. That you can use um, or contrast bathing so you've got your jacuzzis your saunas things like that or some players maybe feel that they need a gym session could be an upper body session because then it's not affecting the legs or maybe towards some of your less intense sessions maybe you could get a leg session and so again this is worked around and planned properly and the players have an input on this and they know their body so 
you know, um, if they want to do that, that that's fine as long as it doesn't impede your session. You know, you don't want a player coming to you on a Thursday or a Sunday and say, "I'm sore because I done a gym session there yesterday." Because you'd be saying like, "Well, this is Sunday. This is a match day. You didn't prepare properly." So you want to be on top of that and making sure the players aren't just going and doing their own thing totally. So you have other wee things, and this this is where the isolated um, skill work comes in. So. I have a picture here, video analysis. So on a, on your recovery nights or your nights that you're not at your club, you could be doing a video analysis session. Now, some players might not need to do this and they could be down to the pitch doing isolated skill work. So they don't have to do it in the training session. So, you know, on a Monday night, the free ticker, he's taking his freeze or, you know, somebody's working on tackling or somebody's working on, you know, um, it's not intense, but it's just sort of concentrating on that skill because, you know, your isolated skill work, yes, it's great to get it in, but in a match day, your isolated skill work, you know, it's going to be under pressure. So that's whenever you're going to be judged on it. So that's why we ask the question, is it enough to say that the isolated skill work in the games, because the games are intense, there's decision making to be made. So what is your skill work like whenever those questions are asked? So the more um, we can throw that at players in training, then when it comes to a match, then you'll get your, your best outcome or you you hope you will anyway. So that's the reason for that. But I think there's there, there's room and there's enough days in the week to get both in. So um, on the bottom then, you've got your different types of recovery in terms of off the field. So your food, your protein intake, your you know carbohydrates, whatever it takes to, to recover. Again, if you've got professionals to help you with this, great, let's get it. Um, your hydration levels, um, you want to make sure that that's constant all the time. Um, sleeping, are you getting enough sleep? You know, because sleeping could be the best. Uh, it could be the most important picture uh, on the screen there. You know, getting enough sleep. Are we getting enough sleep? Um, and if you're not, um, how can we work towards that? Or are you helping? Are you giving ideas? And then the, just the last one there, you know, is the players getting enough time to spend with their family? Um, if they're not married or they don't have kids or they spend enough time with their friends, brothers, sisters, you know, parents, just things like that. Um, but I know maybe with lockdown and being in the same house with everybody for so long, it might be good. To, uh, I can see players moving out of the house every night of the week, but uh, we'll we'll see how, how that goes. So the don'ts that we learned from from 2020 now this is this is an interesting one and we'll probably get a bit of feedback on this one here Oshin, if that if that's okay time wise folks we're, we're 20 past eight so we've got about 10 minutes left so and we've only a couple of slides to go so i'm happy with 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 that so the don'ts that we learned from 2020 uh, don't rush in on the first day restrictions are lifted um monday the 12th of april or you know i think county teams can go back on the 19th of april um south and then the youth in the south can go back on the 26th of april so whatever your jurisdiction is um you know you don't necessarily have to rush straight in on the first night and um just get started you want to make sure that you've taken all this on board tonight to get all the off the, off the field stuff ready and just make sure that you're ready to go uh, and if you are ready to go by the 12th that's fine as well you know you can do that every county is going to be different in that you know they're going to probably have to run maybe internal um competitions uh cup competitions because the latest news is that they're going to maybe run with county season first so counties are going to uh, clubs are going to have to they're starting on the 12th of April, but they might not have a championship to September. So they're going to have to fill that um, area in the middle with games without their county players. So you, you can't maybe have promotion relegation scenarios. So they're going to have to be maybe um, competition, you know, um, district competitions and things like that. So we'll just have to watch out for what that might be. So don't judge any of your players uh, or put them under too much pressure in, in these times. Some will be mad keen to get out. Some will be a wee bit more sceptical, maybe won't. Um, I know this time we might have more confidence because the rates are definitely going down, especially in the north. Um, so we take all that into consideration um, and remember that it's an opt-in. And whenever the questionnaires come back and the, the COVID, all the COVID restrictions um, and the measures that the COVID committee will put in place, you know, it's still an opt-in. So if a player opts out, um, yes, you can have a chat with them or whatever, but or, or her um, if they decide not to play you know you don't want to put too much too much pressure on let them make their, their own decision so don't arrange and play too many challenge games like last year 
we had um, we'd heard stories of of teams uh, traveling all over the place and playing as many matches as they could and this was all happening even before maybe they knew that the football was going to come back so you know yes by by all means have those planned and uh, maybe penciled in but you know you don't want to play too many of them because you know they do come with their issues but certainly players will want some and you'll want some just to see how things are going but definitely not too many of them and too many too soon uh, don't plan with the players input so again just like we talked about earlier on this evening you know talking to players now uh, getting them into their groups and um, getting them you know individual information back to you that you know what they feel that you know benefited them last year and what they feel uh, will help them moving forward now obviously you're the manager you're the coach you're the, the lead decision maker so you're going to take all the information that they give you on board but you're still going to make the right decision for for the team so don't be afraid uh, and certainly take all that uh, player input on board so don't train too hard too soon as well so you've just like we talked about at the start of the night you'll have players coming at different levels um and you don't have to be going at it um because they'll probably have been doing tough sessions to date. So you want to just sort of making sure that you're sort of building them nicely into it. Um, and maybe that you're maybe doing some maybe functional screening with them if you have the resources to do that or if your physio are there to do that. You know, um, just sort of build it up uh, nicely and get a plan together. And the quicker that county boards get fixture information to us, then we know when we have uh, to work towards so don't do that extra set of runs just because you want to do them or they're in your plan you know again you're listening to your players and if there's a night where you don't get that extra run then that's fine you know um and don't expect don't expect the players to be up to match scenario straight away we've got plenty of time so let's just get them enjoying getting the touch of the ball again and and being with their friends being with their teammates and just sort of um working on those uh, skills that they've that so badly missed um so getting a bit of fun and a bit of enjoyment and i think uh, you know the last point to have here is you know uh, don't forget that all teams are in the same boat and everyone is in with a chance so you know it really gives teams an opportunity there's no threat of uh, relegation or you know um it's 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 another short season you know let's let's embrace it let's enjoy it you know the stronger teams aren't really getting stronger um so it's an opportunity for teams to break through and you know who knows anything anything can happen so injuries now which probably takes us to the last um part of our our presentation this evening now some of you already know i'm just going to jump on a couple of slides here um to the be ready to to play program this is a program that was rolled out by the GAA. Uh, it started in early March. Um, now, it's not too late to join that. It's on the Learning GAA website. So I'll get Oshin maybe to, to put the details of it into the, the chat box, the link for it. Uh, and if not, if you just sort of Google learning.ga.e, you'll see the information from it. So this is, um, it's currently available to all coaches, managers, and players. And it's really just about players returning safely. Um, and it's got, strength and conditioning exercises and professional advice. It's got physio exercises, professional advice. So just like I said earlier on, I'm not a physio or I'm not a strength and conditioning coach. I'm not telling you what to do from that point of view, but there's videos on there. There's uh, testimonials on there. So it's certainly as a coach or a manager or as a club, it's worth checking out because if you cut down on that injury um, list this year or or maybe that um, operation, you know, that, that, that maybe will come hopefully it won't but um it's 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 certainly something worth checking out so if you want to sort of let your club know that it's there and someone could be could be um, benefiting from that so we've got our injuries so the three types of injuries um that we all know too well uh, on your left here um you've got your your knee injuries um your joint injuries your hip your ankle your shoulders so that's that type of injury um, in the middle here that's coming more um, unfortunately just as the game is getting physical more physical um, you've got your concussion injuries and you want to make sure that you know you you do you are aware of the protocols for a concussion um, and that proper first aid or you know you're looking out for for things um, if that does happen hopefully it won't and then you've got your soft tissue injury so you've got your calf your hamstring your you know whatever muscle it is 
Um, that's the one that we all dread. That's the one as coaches that we're, will we do that extra run? Will we not do it? You know, those sprints, oh, I don't want to do them sprints because I'm afraid someone will get injured. But, you know, if they get through them, they get the benefit from them. But, you know, maybe that's that one person who you missed in the warm up who was feeling a wee bit or looking a wee bit um, iffy. You didn't pull them out or you didn't see that they needed pulled out. And they didn't tell you because they want to play. And then all of a sudden they pull up in the last couple of runs of the hamstring. So that's just um, the one that we, we dread. Uh, we don't want any injuries, but unfortunately, with the nature of a short um, competitive season, we're going to we're going to get them, and this will take me on to the next slide. So, injuries then. So the GA annual report, the injury um, was detailed in it. Um, so we have the 2019 data, and we've got the 2020 data. So we've got a couple of wee things here, and I'll get some uh, chat and direction from you as well. So the total. Um, number of injuries um, for 2019 was 6,288. Now, this is for football, for hurling, um, both county and club, and both adult and youth. So it sort of covers all um, all that. Um, so 6,288, and that's anything from your, your knee injuries to your hamstring injuries to your joint injuries. That that covers, covers everything. Um, and the total number of injuries for 2020 was 5,692. Now, 2019, 6,288, it obviously was higher, but 5,692, it's not that far away from it. And it was only a 12-week window. So you had that amount of injuries in a 12-week window, uh, and that's the amount of injuries you had over a 12-month period. <laughs> with with 2021, you know we're gonna we're gonna have those those injuries. Um, so knee injuries continues to be the highest recorded injury. So Ashin, if I can sort of bring the coaches in on this one here, knee injuries continue to be the highest recorded injury. So why why does that continue to be the highest? And is there anything that we can do to sort of prevent that? We're looking. There's some suggestions here saying maybe poorly maintained pitches. Mm -hmm. Maybe a reason. Um, movements during games are different to training, so there's more stresses. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's um, maybe looking at the likes of too much strength training without proper recovery, too mm -hmm. much training in a short period. Mm -hmm. A modern game, more more games, more pitches. Maybe another few that I think we are that we are maybe looking at them a bit much. Mm -hmm. um, maybe overloading the gym. Maybe bad warm ups. Not stretching properly. Not enough S and C. Mm -hmm. Fatigue players for technique and fundamentals, then there's a possibility it can be a freak accident. Then there's the debate of the astroturf pitches yeah. and maybe overloading the players pre game days. Mm -hmm. Apply up plyometric lateral movement to strengthen them could be a possible way of looking at helping them. So, yeah, a lot of that's, um, you know, you've got the, the answers that you normally would expect is the you know the type of studs or blades that players wear the, the synthetic pitches you know that's all had had a blame for that type of injury but there is a lot of things on there that people have said that we've talked about tonight that we can prevent so speaking to your physios and maybe looking at the ready to play program um, and speaking to maybe strengthening the you know is, is there something that physically you can do or that you can help players um, and even you know if that's you know even you save one player from an knee injury or you know that one Kamogi player, or you know that one hurling player. You know that 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 is a that is a help. Um, so we all have a have an onus to make sure that we're doing the right exercises to to help these um, these athletes. In terms of um, just another question, just sort of leading into it, and this is for for any hurling coaches or well, any any coach could can can have their their say here. So there was more adult. Hurling injuries in 2020 short season compared to the full 2019 full season. Now, this wasn't just knee injuries. This was every type of injury. So why do you think that there would have been more hurling injuries in the 2020 short season? I was wondering maybe, maybe the season is too intense. Maybe a lack of time to work on the skills, mm -hmm. getting used to the hurl again. I was mm -hmm. wondering maybe Limerick were going too well for everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the way the game's being played, teams not being fully prepared and going in as the season was shorter. Yeah, I think um, in terms of the like, uh, you all you'll always have the dual the dual player, 
but maybe because it was a short season, there was less um, hurling conditioning done, and there was more more of that work was done with the footballers, and maybe it was maybe more than than was done in previous seasons. Um, so there's probably um, a lot of reasons as to why why it was, but um, judging by that, um, the number of injuries probably for 2021 um, will will be on the increase um, because we'll probably be playing a wee bit longer than 2020. But it's up to us then as as coaches and managers and, and club officials that we do everything in our power to make sure that the players are best prepared. Um, and if that means that by all the work that you're doing now and you're planning towards that um, and they see that, um, you know, you're, you're obviously going to get your unlucky injuries and that that's, that's just that's just sport um, and hopefully we'll not get too many of those or, or too many serious ones let's make sure that we are really looking after our players and um, we're listening to them we're looking out for them and we're putting all these provisions in place so that this injury list um, can can decrease um, and that would be great so you know just maybe less is more or working with everyone and using that's why I say that ready, uh, that ready to play. You know, it's it's certainly something that that, that everyone should look at. So Washington, I'm going to um, to move on. Um, again, if there's anybody who has, you know, questions around the the injury, um, she, you can actually see the the J annual report as well. She'll be able to check on all the different types of injuries um, for the different grades. But that one there, the knee, just continues to be um, to be the the highest one. So we've went through the ready to to play. So just the last slide, uh, folks. So we've just on the air. Um, so just before I do ask you for any final questions, I would just like to thank you for for tuning in tonight. I think we had something like 140 coaches um, on, which was which was super. Um, so I hope you you've taken something from it, at least one thing. Um, we've had a, lear- a lot of learning from last March. Uh, since lockdown, you know, a lot of webinars, a lot of online stuff, and I think some people maybe now are they're getting they're getting tired, they're getting mentally tired, and they want to just get out on the pitch. So, uh, I would just say, you know, take all the learning and the info that you've got from from the online, um, and have the confidence and to go and and use that information, not copy it, uh, you know, and and use exa- exactly with you, you know, just take the wee bits that you need for your teams and and use it, and you'll certainly you'll certainly help um, and I just hope that some of the things that we talked about tonight will help and even maybe now for five or ten minutes we can certainly have uh, a wee chat and if there's any questions certainly um, put them into me but it's 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 something that I'm passionate about and um, you know I just continuously want to just get better and and get our teams better and um, just get just get back at it and on the 12th of April the kids need it uh, we need it uh, families needed, parishes needed, communities needed. So uh, it'll be great to get back at it. So now that we've been given the chance, why not be best prepared we can? And please don't log out if you've got any questions. We can we can certainly um, answer them now. So Ashin, um, if you can just sort of keep me up to date with anything that comes in there. Yeah, I have a few uh, written down here. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to keep a track of them as best as I could as we were going. There's plenty coming in. Um, the first one there, mm-hmm. going back to your your schedule, your yeah. possible schedule. How long would you look for to your for your Tuesday and Thursday sessions to last? I will Tuesday the Tuesday session. The Tuesday session is going to be longer um, because maybe you'll have a well. It, it all depends. You know, you don't really want any of your sessions to be longer than possibly an hour and a half, um, an hour and fifteen minutes. So, you know. Again, it's it's just listening to the players, and, and if the extended warm up means that it goes on a wee bit longer, or the players are happy to stay and do a bit more skill work, then you know that that session could drag on. But you certainly don't want it going on too long, um, and you don't want to be standing talking, or maybe if it's a cold night or whatever. So you're taking all that into consideration. So in terms of a tough session, intensity wise, you know your game lasts for 60, 65, maybe extra time with 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 the short condensed season you know you don't want your sessions to be any longer than an hour an hour and 10 minutes um be an hour and 15 minutes max but but 
you've got lots of rest in there as well. So you want to take that into consideration as well. So you, you sort of monitor it as you go. Certainly at the start, I wouldn't be doing long sessions, especially uh, with the return to play. You know, you don't want to be um, doing too much too soon. So, you know, you're working no shorter than the hour and, you know, no longer than an hour and a half. But again, that's just me. Um, everybody live their own say on that. Would you would you incorporate some player development coaching from a specific coach to the players during the week? Um, yeah, um, I know a lot of clubs, um, and and with with our club as well, we would have a like a coaching committee set up so that you know each management team they train they train their teams and then they, they play matches, but they would have maybe somebody in the crowd watching uh, or somebody at each session watching and maybe on another night taking them away to do maybe things that they work on to save the, to save you doing it on, on any given night. So that's something that, that could be easily set up. And, you know, there is information on, on the on the GA website, but if, if anybody wants to, to contact me directly after this, certainly feel free and we can have a chat about it. So, yeah, it's, it's easily set up and it's, it's certainly something that you can see the benefits of um, fairly quickly. Perfect. Um, another question here. How much is too much in terms of number of training sessions a week once youth players have acclimatised? So I was going to acclimatise the return to play again. Um, yeah, well, you know, traditionally it's always been club level. Uh, your two sessions during the week and then one at the weekend. Um, you know, you you wouldn't want to be doing an extra night during the week just for the sake of it. So you want to have a reason in that. But again, it's it's sitting down with your players and are they happy with just the two sessions? Do they want more? Why do they want more? And why do you want another session? So if you can come up with reasons and answers for those questions, then by by all means, you know, an extra night will not do any harm. You know, at club level, four nights, I don't think it's needed. Um, you know. But you might find that some young lads are down at the pitch doing kickabouts anyway. So, you know, informal chats and, and things like that. But certainly organised team sessions at club level, I can't see any reason for teams to be doing any more than two or three. Three max. Perfect. Um, with a couple, with one or two more left, just. Mm -hmm. um, question here. Saying, how many sessions would you use to build up to a high intensity level of training for under 15, assuming they're coming back on fit and not much activity on their own? Yeah, under 15s um, was maybe a, a, an age group maybe who were concentrating on exams recently, or maybe the under 15 coach didn't have them didn't have them doing any exercises because maybe they felt that they were too young or whatever. But uh, certainly, you want to be building them up carefully, but twice a week would be would be okay but you, you know you want to be within your clubs speaking to the under 17 manager because there might be an overlap or maybe even with the under 13 manager so you want to make sure that depending on your numbers and depending on how many are are, are doubling up you want to make sure that they're doing at least their two running sessions and then getting some football in as well so you know there's no reason why at that age they can't be doing the two running sessions but i, I would question why they would need to do any more than that um, but again, you know, in the ready to play program, there will be options on there to to um, see different running programs for the different age groups. So um, you'll know your players better. So, you know, gauge them when they come back and talk to them. You know, there's no reason why at 15 years of age that you can't talk to them and, you know, help each other out, you know. So, um, yeah, hope that helps. Perfect. Um so with with one we can combine there, but with one more here, mm -hmm. um, would you think tactical periodization would be of benefit with such a short season? Um, well, tactics is definitely you know it's something now that nearly needs to be discussed and talked about during every session. Every player needs to know um, what the overall team plan is. What the goalkeeper's job is, the defender's job is, midfielders, forwards, um, your whole panel, you know. So certainly, um, you want to be making sure that you know your sessions are all covering tactics and even uh, nights nights off. So you want to be making sure that even from now that your players are aware of what it is you're planning. Um, and uh, you know, if you use those measures that we talked about earlier, that could maybe help you sort of get started on that. 
Um, but yeah, there's no reason why it can't be included just because short season. Um, you know, you'd be surprised at how long you might have now because club championship might not be until August, September, maybe even you know later than that, just depending on what they decide. So you'll have plenty of time. Perfect. We'll, we'll finish off here with this last yep. one. Um, yep. There's a few sort of topics on it, but we'll try and combine them here. Hopefully yep. I don't miss anything. Right. Um, so we're looking maybe at so maybe an underage team here, for under eight team first. Um, so just going back to under eights, I've often thought of going twice a week rather than one evening. Do mm-hmm. you think that at that age, once a week is sufficient? As kids may find twice too much in the week. Um, I know a lot of other clubs are maybe doing two sessions a week, but mm-hmm. they also go on to say that um, some players might be also playing camogie or hurling or other sports. So how would would you how would you consider managing that? Would you look at doing maybe just one session or try and get as, as many as you can for a, a young underage team? Uh, it's a good question and good question to finish on. Um, it's one where uh, what, what what we do is you now we'll be starting. We're not going to start Monday the twelfth of April. We're going to wait to Saturday the seventeenth of April. Everybody's different, but we'll have our under eights out that day. Now, just depend on the weather. Uh, normally, what we do is we wait till the weather gets uh, gets really good, and then we would have them out twice a week. But I can't see at under eight level why twice a week. Uh, you know, you, you can certainly do that because the players will be going to soccer twice a week. They'll be going to swimming pool twice a week. They'll be going to athletics twice a week. So why should we not have them for twice a week? So um, yes, there's valid points there that maybe they're playing camogie or they're playing hurling or they're playing other sports. That's for you to manage. And there might not be players who are dual, but you can certainly bring the ones that aren't twice a week. There's no problem with that. Um, just bear in mind the weather and, and, and the equipment and making sure that the parents are communicated with why you're doing it. Um, and you'll see a benefit really quickly, but certainly. And what you could also do is, you know, cut cut down the time in the session. So have it that maybe it's only 45 minutes or 40 minutes. So, yeah, by all means, under eights, get them out. Uh, twice a week, no problem. Oshin, I think that's. Uh, we'll yeah. just. If there's we'll any other, que- if there's any other questions, I'm happy to take any any questions. So if you want to contact me, um, by all means do. I appreciate everyone tuning in tonight. Um, Oshin, thank you for your for your help, and um, good night, folks. Thank you. Yes, thanks very much, Killian. Um, great presentation. As always, um, thanks again for joining in, everyone. Uh, make sure you keep an eye on also GA social media. The recording will be going out in a few days, and please be keep your eye out for the next few sessions coming up as well. So, thank you.